In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Portfolio 123's screens. The screen is the most basic tool that we offer, yet it's also one of the most versatile. It's not as elegant as simulation testing when mimicking actual portfolio performance, and it doesn't present as wide a picture as ranking performance tests, but it excels at testing rule-based strategies. The screen layout looks like this. The Rules tab is where you enter buying criteria that must be met in order for a stock to be purchased. Let's start by using the wizard to input some rules into our screen. We'll start with the value factor, price to sales. Click Add Wizard Rule, then use the drop-down menu to find value, and then add price to sales. In terms of size, we don't want to invest in stocks that are not liquid, but we don't necessarily want large caps either, as they seem to be more resistant to fundamentals-based investing than smaller caps. In the wizard, we can click on price and volume, then on liquidity, then on daily dollar amount, 20-day average. We'll reduce the default setting greater than 500K to greater than 100K because we're looking for small caps. We'll also set a minimum price of $1 by clicking on reasonable price and changing the $3 to $1. That takes care of liquidity. After that, Using the wizard again, we can click on Company Basics, then Size, then Market Capitalization. Here, we'll change the greater than to less than and fill in 5,000 million, which is 5 billion, to exclude large caps. With these four wizard rules, our screen now looks like this. Next, we want a growth rule. We want stocks with a recent increase in operating income, let's say at least 5%. Operating income is more stable than EPS, as it's a pre-tax number. Since the wizard doesn't include operating income growth, we'll use P123's formula. We can click on Fundamentals at the top of the list of formulas and functions, Income Statement, then scroll down to Operating Income. On the right, we can then scroll down to Growth PYQ, which means the growth of the factor in the most recent quarter compared to the same quarter last year, previous year quarter. If we double click on that, it gets added to our rule and we can then add greater than five to the rule. Note that spaces normally don't interfere with the operation of a rule. Feel free to use them liberally to make your formula readable or leave them out altogether if you want. Our next rule is a quality rule. We want companies with negative or no accruals. What are our accruals? In accounting rules, we recognize income when it's earned and expenses when they're incurred, regardless of when the cash is received or dispersed. Accruals are the difference between the accounting value and the cash value. So if I sell a widget for $2 but don't actually receive the $2 until next year, this year I can add it to my income, but I'll have $2 in accruals. One of the most logical ways to measure accruals is to subtract operating cash flow from net income. So we can get net income from the income statement and operating cash flow from the cash flow statement. And our rule can be Net income, TTM, is less than operating cash flow, TTM. And TTM means trailing 12 months. Finally, let's add a technical rule. We want stocks with low systematic volatility. In other words, stocks that are relatively unaffected by large market movements. Stable stocks like Walmart, Coca-Cola, and Procter & Gamble. One way to accomplish this is to limit ourselves to stocks with low share turnover. The formula for this is simple. It's the number of shares traded divided by the number of shares available. That factor is available in the technical menu of functions as volume M per shares out, monthly volume as a percentage of shares outstanding, measured over the last three months. But what's a good limit for share turnover? Picking an arbitrary number is weak. Thankfully, you can use one of Portfolio 123's most powerful tools, the F rank, short for formula rank. F rank, allows us to sort stocks based on whatever factor we choose and return stocks in a certain percentile range. Let's say we want to only invest in companies with shared turnover in the bottom 50% of our universe. The formula would look like this, F rank, volume M per shares out, all ask greater than 50. The number sign all means we're comparing the share turnover to all stocks. We could also have used number sign industry, number sign sector, or number sign previous. Number sign ask is short for ascending, which means we're using ascending order with the lower ranks best. If we wanted to invest in stocks with high share turnover, we would have used number sign DESC, descending. 
As a final rule, let's say we want to take advantage of one of the pre-built core ranking systems for our screen. Portfolio123 offers six core ranking systems that rank all stocks on the basis of a score between 0 and 100. In this example, we'll screen for stocks that rank higher than 60 on a core sentiment ranking. Rating core sentiment greater than 60. We can now save our screen by clicking on the Save button, and then we can name it. I'm calling it 8 Rule Demo. Now let's see what stocks this system has chosen for us. Press the Run Screen button, and you'll see a list of stocks appear below. Our screener returns us 62 companies, which is a reasonable number, including quite a large number of Canadian mining stocks. Now let's backtest our screen to see how well it performs. Start by clicking the Backtest tab. You'll see eight parameters to fill in. You can fill these in in any way you want, but I'm using the default settings except using a 10-year backtest and 0.5% slippage. Press the Run Backtest tab. I come up with a chart that looks like this. This tells me that my screen has outperformed the S&P 500 beautifully, chalking up an annualized return of 24%. If I scroll to the bottom, this shows me that I'm holding an average of 28 stocks at a time, that my average turnover every four weeks is 50%, and that my average return per four weeks is 1.89% compared to 1.11% for the S&P 500. It also breaks down those figures for up markets and down markets. Now, 50% is a lot of turnover. Let's change the rebalance frequency to every 26 weeks and rerun the test. This way, I can pursue holding those stocks for six months. The result is a little different. My annualized return drops from 24% to 20%. However, these kinds of tests are very sensitive to starting dates. If I rerun the back test starting just one month later, my return goes up to 24%, and if I rerun it starting one month earlier, it goes up to 25%. Here's what's happening. A six-month rebalance only gives me a total of 20 starting dates over a 10-year period. Six-month returns on a parcel of 28 stocks can vary widely from week to week, making your backtest somewhat haphazard. Fortunately, Portfolio123's rolling backtest gives you more reliable information. Click on the Clear Results button, then on the Rolling Backtest tab. If we put in a 10-year period at the top and press the Run Rolling Backtest button, we'll get a screen full of numbers. Scroll down to the bottom, we can see how well our screen performed in an average six-month period. The average number of holdings is 28, and the average six-month return is now 11.74% compared to uh, the S&P 500's 6.56%, an excess of 5.17%. Now, if you look at the number of stocks that pass the screen each week, you'll see it varies a lot. Sometimes only 12 stocks pass, sometimes 52 stocks pass. Let's say we want a portfolio that's a consistent 10 stocks. Click on the Settings tab, then on Ranking, Ranking System, and finally find Core Combination. Then in the box marked Maximum Number of Stocks, type in 10. We will now get the 10 highest ranked stocks according to the ranking system that combines Portfolio 123's six core ranking systems. Now we can run the rolling back test again to see if we always get 10 stocks and if our results have improved. We see that with an average of 9.9 .9 in a few weeks, we still don't get 10 stocks, but we get close. And the results have improved dramatically, going up to an average of 12.81% per six-month period. Annualized, that's 27.26%. This wraps up my demonstration of our screening and backtesting tool. Make sure to try out our screening and backtesting tools, among others, with a 21-day trial for only $9. A free one-on-one -on -one demo is also included in the trial. You can find a link in the description section below.